Now, this de bloom was of the purest virgin gold, ranked somewhere between the heart of the gorgeous hills. Now, through now, the nailed amidst of the rustiness of the arm bolt and the verdigris of copper spikes, yet untouchable and immaculate to any foulness, it still preserved its quito gold. Sometimes the sailors talked it over in the weary watch by night, wondering whose it was and who to be at last, and whether he'd ever lived to spend it. Now, them noble golden coins of South America are as metal of the sun and the tropic token pieces. It's so changed that the doubloon of the ship is the most wealthy example of them things. On its round border, it bore the letters Republica del Ecuador, Quito. Zoned by them letters, you see the likeness of three Andy summits. One on a flame, a tar on another, and a third of a crowing cock, while arching all over the segment of the partition zodiac. Before this coin, Ahab, not unobserved by others, was now pausing. Is there something ever egotistical in the mountain tops and the tars and all other grand and lofty things? Look at him. Three peaks as proud as Lucifer and the firm tower of the Ahab, the volcano. That is Ahab, the courageous, the undaunted, the victorious fowl. That too is Ahab. We all Ahab, and this round gold is but the image of a rounder globe, which is like the magician's glass to catch every single man that he turns the mirrors back on his own mysterious self. Great pain, small gain for all them who be a ast in the world to solve them. It can't solve itself. Methinks now, this coin son is wearing about a ruddy face, but see, A, he enters the sign of the storms, the equinox. For six months before the wheeled out of the former equinox at Aries. From storm to storm, and so be it. And then, born in the throes, tis fit that the man should ever live in the pains of the die and the pangs. So be it then. Here, stout stuff, the woes work on. So be it then. Starbuck. The fair finger gonna be pressed into gold, but the devil's claws must have left a moldings in the sense yesterday. Starbuck murmured to himself, leaning up against the bulwarks. The old man seemed to be. Reading Belshar's awful writing again, all have been marked on the coin unexpectedly, and he sets back going below, and let me take a read. In the dark valley between the three mighty, heavenly abiding peaks that almost teem Trinity in, in some faint, earthly symbol. So in this veil of death, God girts us round. And over all our gloom in the sun of the righteousness, he still shines a beacon of hope. And we bend down our eyes, and the dark veil shows our moldy soul, but if we lift them up and the bright sun meets our glances halfway to cheer yet, oh, well, the great sun is of no fixture, and if at midnight we would fain snatch some sweet solace from him, we gaze him for in vain. This coin speaks wisely, mildly, truly, but still sadly to me, I will quit, lest truth shake me falsely. <laughs>